The Everyman Radio Podcast. New music. I'm holding out for a lie. I need to break up the dark. I'm waiting up for a sign. Some neon in the rough. A savior in the twilight. Come get me from the endless midnight. It's hotter in the nighttime. Unraveling from tainted paradise It pulled me under Still a tongue telling me lies Somebody's lover It was the thrill of my life You're playing high stakes Lay down your ex and your heart Leaving it to fate And that's just where it starts through our conversations, we will impart some knowledge whilst learning ourselves how to progress even further. Here is your host. Okay. Okay. I'm recording. Um... No, I'm just laughing at myself because now I'm recording. I've actually not saying anything. Um, <laughs> it's uh, your name is Jeff. Is that right? Jeff, correct. Yes. Can you hear me fine? Perfect. Crystal All clear. Right. There you go. All right. Okay. Hi, Jeff. Welcome to Everyman Radio. <laughs> Hello there. And thank you very much for having me. Oh, you're more than welcome. This is fantastic. It really is. 
uh, because I've been so quiet um, in the, for the past few months. Um, I think, well, lots of people have, but um, I think it's just the way that um, COVID has come along and the way that it's um, kind of messed up with everyone's routines, it's kind of become quite difficult for people to get back into where they were. <laughs> I agree with you. I agree with you. Yes, it's been it's been very disruptive in many many layers. And uh, whereabouts are you, Jeff? You, I'm sorry. Whereabouts are you? Uh, I am in uh, Southern California, uh, one of the suburbs of Los Angeles. Okay. I'm just trying to think. Um, yeah, and I. I do mention it a few times, but I did, I, I lived in America for a year um, and I was <laughs> blessed or cursed with, uh, well, it's an exchange program from my university, Salford University near Manchester in the UK. And uh, an exchange program, I went to um, Toledo, Ohio. <laughs> Which is an interesting place. Uh, I remember at the time it had a, a, a record for the number of fast food shops or something, but uh, <laughs> something odd, but it was good fun. Um, and from that, yeah, I did lots of traveling around the States and got my friends to come over. And um, uh, my favorite thing was buying a Dodge Ram or close to, it was a big van. Okay. And uh, we would, when I'd floor the accelerator, we they'd call it kick down. <laughs> and that would, I don't, it would just, yeah, absorb all of the fuel in the petrol tank. So it didn't last very long, but we had a, yeah, fantastic time. I'm glad to hear good, that you had a good time, despite being in Toledo. <laughs> yeah, well, to the, yeah, Toledo is an interesting place. I remember the, um, one of the claims to fame are from the, the series MASH that was uh, yeah, famous about the Vietnam War and the healthcare. Sure. Um, I think it was Klinger, the guy right. that was a bit transvestite and a bit odd. Right, right. I think he was Toledo, Ohio, and I think for some reason he was linked to it. Um, I think he may have had a restaurant there now, or, or then anyway, or modified. But um, um, If I'm not mistaken, I think he was actually from Toledo. Yeah, no, I think yeah. you could be right, yeah. I mean, the, the real guy is a, in addition to the fictional one. Um, Jamie, um, I'm blanking on his last name now, uh, but I think he was actually a, a, a born and raised there. Yeah, I um, well, I suppose I was very, very young. I say very, very young. I was 25, but um, actually, no, I wasn't. I was 21. Well, I was on the cusp between 20 and 21 and just went through that irritated phase because I'm British and I was above 18, so we can drink alcohol 18 plus in UK. And in America, it, I believe it's 21. So, um, but because I hadn't reached 21, I was still getting questioned. Um, but of course I became very arrogant British. Um, what are you talking about? Uh, I'm 18, well, I'm 21, I'm 20, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but, um, no, I just remember the time. It was, you know, fascinating. And very big. That's what I remember a lot. Just how big everything was. Because England is just tiny. It's like a little thimble. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a large country. Um, yeah, it took me, um, I'm going to say, five days of driving from uh, New York City, where I grew up, to Los Angeles when I moved here. And uh, uh, that that doesn't count a couple of stops that I made on the way to visit with friends who were, you know, kind of just off the freeway. Uh, but um, it is a large country, yeah. We can cover um, or fit um, several Englands in it. Yeah, it's tiny. Uh, I loved it, though. I loved just my uh, the British accent. It was very popular, so I, I just loved when I would meet lots of different people and they would say, oh, say something, say something, because they just loved the, the, the accent of right. speaking British. So yeah, when I was irritating 
or gate crashing sororities and fraternities. <laughs> I don't know, it's just my memories are coming back to me. I didn't really uh, uh, do much in that. End. But um, yeah, left as soon as I went in, really. But um, it was interesting, <laughs> just very different to what I was used to in the UK. Um, so, yeah, please tell us, I've, I've read a little bit about um, the work you've done, and I know that you are, um, yeah, you have um, published a, your, your first book, I believe, The First Correct. Coming, but yes. that should, shouldn't that have been called the second, no, the, the first? First, second coming. The first, second coming. <laughs> and, yeah, I saw a reference to it about 9-11 so so uh, what was the in cause, yeah because um yeah I, I interviewed one of the producers of um one one of the loose change um episodes or i think a year ago but and um, what is the the connection between your your, your writing your book and uh, your current book and 9-11 uh, the um the main or core idea of the book uh, was that Earth's God, you know, the, the God that we all worship, at least for those of us that do worship, whether, whether he is um, called God, whether he's called Allah, whether he's called anything mm -hmm. else, that God retires in 2027 <laughs> and is, and is, and is, um, replaced by a different God, a different sort of God, a planetary turnaround specialist. And the idea of that, that basic idea came to me on 9-11 as I was watching television, as I was watching television, I was watching the World Trade Center collapse. Um, and the thought came to me that we need a new God one who is a planetary turnaround specialist. Yeah, and I don't know where that thought came from. Uh, I don't know why it stayed with me because I was not writing anything at that time. I was mm. fully engaged in litigation as a civil trial lawyer, which is what my career is. Okay. And uh, usually when a, a random thought comes to me, it just it comes and it goes like most random thoughts do. This one didn't go. Mm. And when I decided to start writing in 2015, I believe it was, uh, I'm sitting here in front of a computer, just like I am with you. And I'm waiting for some inspiration. And this whole story just comes through where I had the names of the two main characters. I had their backstories. I had a basic plot and I had three different possible endings and it all just poured out. And it all came from that core concept of planetary turnaround specialists replacing the new, the existing God. Don't ask me, you know, don't ask me how I got there. But yeah, I know. It's fascinating how those, yeah. how different thoughts do come into your brain and at different yeah. times. It's, um, yeah, some are, yeah, you just dismiss them completely, but some kind of stick with you and you think, well, there's something there for some reason I, I need to, well, it's going to be give useful and then we'll investigate further or carry use that. Right. As a, um, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, it, it, it was, you know, it was fairly, I mean, obviously it's going to be traumatic to watch that from, you know, a, anybody who watched it would be traumatized by it. But I had, I had ties to that building. Um, uh, my my law firm did annual seminars at the conference center that was up at the top of the building, which I believe was called Windows on the World. All right. And uh, so I'd been there in March. I had clients in the building. Uh, I knew people in the conference center because we keep going there. So when I'm watching the, you know, the whole building collapse, I'm thinking about the people that I know there. And, you know, are they in the building? Are they going to be yeah. surviving the building? And, you know, of course, also thinking about people who I don't know who are in the building. Um, so that may have been what spurred the, the thought. But 
uh, but but uh, you know it was it was a very uh, uh, traumatic uh, experience for me as it was I'm sure for everybody else. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, it um, sent me to Vietnam. <laughs> Except Vietnam was over the course of years, and you know this one was just one event. But yeah, I yeah, no, I mean literally at the time because I had been, I would be, had been teaching ICT computing in Brighton, in the UK, and my a program manager at the time had left to go to Malaysia, and uh, I thought, well, that's cool, I'll follow suit. So I went to lots of job interviews in London, the job fairs, and I, I got myself a job in Vietnam, in, uh, in Ho Chi Minh City. Amazing. So the next uh, Christmas, I went to, yeah, I went to Vietnam for three years. Uh, it was just amazing. Yeah, that, uh, that sounds like quite, a, quite an experience. Uh, did you learn the, learn the language at all? <laughs> it's one of the hardest languages to learn. Um, my address, it, well, I had to learn my draft, dress and it took me two months to learn my address because to order any food, when I needed to give my address, but whatever I said, because it's a tonal language, however you say the word, it needs to be, one word can be said in seven different tones. So my address was Ba Moi Chin Dung So Bon Lang Bao Ti, which used to be the kind of, um, uh, um, journalist kind of area at um, in um, um, actually I'm, I'm forgetting but um, it was just very very difficult to learn so I, I, can't, I didn't really <laughs> I didn't stick at that <laughs> but amazing country utterly amazing I'm sure it was yeah I'd love to visit all of those, those areas and if Chinese is the same way it, uh, very tonal um, I don't know what the difference is between Chinese dialect and or dialects mm. and um, and Vietnamese, but they both they both operate on a tonal uh, basis. Yeah, I don't know, but um, after that, I moved because I was then international teacher. I moved to Oman uh, in the Middle East and became, and that was a very a very a very contrasting place because that was Arabic. Um, Again, a very difficult language to learn, um, but very calm, actually. Um, um, Oman is probably one of the most progressive sort of Arabic countries. Um, I, um, um, yeah, I did have a very nice time there, I have to say. Um, um, no, it was beautiful. And I think, I remember when I was in America, I did say to the people I'd met, you need to travel. Have you ever left this country? because I found that people were less traveled um, and people, I don't know. I just found something about traveling around the world um, really opened someone's mind and they become Absolutely. much more um, well, open-minded because I think one thing where they, where they get the media from, where they get the news from. So I remember, this is quite vivid. I remember, um, I was getting different news broadcasts about, the, say, the general state of the world or general news, and it wasn't from the BBC, which I now call the British Propaganda Society. <laughs> well, it's just something that annoys me constantly. <laughs> One of the things that annoys me. Um, because, yeah, it's just smothered in the UK. I do love the comedy. <laughs> That's one thing I do love about British comedy. I think it's some of the best in the world. Uh, uh, something I really have followed. Some great TV shows. <laughs> um, yes, I've seen, I've seen a few. Yeah, I agree with you completely on that. Um, and, but I also agree with you about the open, uh, open-mindedness. Um, mm. you, you, did your, you did your year here in, in Toledo. I did uh, time in Berlin. Okay. Uh, during um, uh, foreign study. Uh, and, and I was with a group of um, students who were the first um, Americans, or so I'm told, the first Americans who were allowed into East Germany. Oh, okay, um, yeah. So every other day we would be in East Germany, and it was a comparison between the two, you know, in, in terms of culture, in terms of politics, mm. in terms of, uh, 
you know, all sorts of different things. And we, we got to meet various people who were from opera and from uh, government and from, you know, just general people on the street that we could talk to. And it was, uh, it was very, very uh, fascinating. And, and uh, uh, it was an experience that uh, everybody should in some way experience as they're going through college. And um, they, they will get a more open-minded view of the world by listening to and talking to people in another country and getting their views of your country and also, as you say, getting a uh, different media slant. Yeah, definitely. Um, I just did, um, I suppose most vividly when I was in Oman. Um, um, so the, com the country, okay, I can't help myself. I'm quite well, well read afterwards. 9-11, um, inside job, Israel. Um, I think conspiratorially, but <clears throat> essentially Israel have not been very well behaved and what they've done to Palestine uh, is just one of the things that really does infuriate me. Um, and they had the Mossad, still do have Mossad, and they uh, connected lots of spy agencies and also in, the, in technology as well. Um, um, but I remember yeah, watching um, television in uh, when I was in Oman, it was um, Al Jazeera, which wasn't not the best channel because. <laughs> um, and there's another one as well that I. Used. I th it could have been RT actually, then as well. I don't know. I certainly need to watch it now, now and again. Um, but it was yeah, just getting that different viewpoint of how news was reported. Uh, in a different country um, was conflicting directly with what the BBC was actually reporting about the same event. And I suddenly realised, um, oh, I've spent all of my life being lied to. Okay, I'm quite, I'm quite, uh, I forget the word, <laughs> expressive. Um, reactionary i don't know but it took me i just remember it as a quite vividly that um i suddenly realized actually there is a possibility that a lot of what i have been thought to be true wasn't actually as true as i thought it was because i've just been limited to one source of information that news and i began to sort of question um and then yeah just investigate other information more um um, yeah, well, it's just like yeah. fascinating. Just uh... yeah, I think a lot of people have gone through that. I, I as you were as you were talking about that, I was thinking of some people that I know who grew up in uh, in one case at least a very religious household and uh, came to see that a lot of what she had learned um, wasn't necessarily. Yeah. true and you know the the idea of you know take it on faith um some people want more than that um they want not to have not not necessarily not to have faith but but to have a uh, objective basis for it that they that in some way reinforces or 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 confirms what the faith thing is supposed to be uh, and, you know, and she rebelled and she's not even talking to her parents at this point, um, just <laughs> dropped out of her family entirely. Uh, mm -hmm. it, you know, it happens, but it, 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 go ahead. It does happen. I come from actually quite a religious family. Um, my, my grandmother was part of the Plymouth Brethren. So they they were well I, I i assume they still exist but they were very very they were kind of sort of made famous in a bbc tv show called oranges are not the only fruit um about 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 their um 
the, the rules they were giving to young people in terms of they're not allowed to actually meet with or have any any food or drink with somebody who isn't in the faith. They kind of, it was just very, very, very strange, quite frankly. And I just remembered some of the funerals I went to when I was very young. And I was just, I couldn't, um, I just found, I just remember wanting to laugh because it just was so crazy. They were, um, so one of them, I remember this, I was very young, uh, like tw 10, 12, 13, but, um, and in a small church and they would stand up almost randomly and they would say, um, 55, I have to say a number and then start singing the first line of a song and then it was part of a religious song and they would all carry on and everyone was else start singing and he'd go, oh great, okay, I'm fine and then he'd sit down and someone else would stand up and do the same. It was just really quite random. <laughs> I thought there for a moment you were going to say that they stood up and they were playing bingo. And, uh, <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, yeah, I understand that. The, the equivalent to that here is Scientology. Oh, yes. And yes. I had a cousin, I had a cousin who, um, uh, who I spent a lot of time with because he lived one apartment building over from me as I was growing up. And um, he, was, he was very introverted. I was practically his only friend. Um, but but he was but he was a normal guy growing up, and then once he grew up to be um, somewhere in, I'm not sure if it was college now or if it was just after college. But he suddenly got into in Scientology, and he was completely cut off from everybody. And I haven't seen him since. I haven't heard from him since. As far as I know, he's still in it. But um, it was a shame to you know to to lose. Yeah. A family member and someone who you know I thought it was a friend in addition to being a cousin, um, and you know just for for a um, uh, what some people consider to be a complete con, and um, you know so others maybe don't think about that that way, but uh, it's unfortunate to lose a friend that way. Oh, definitely. Um, with the Scientologists. So I have found, the thing I found interesting and positive about them actually is their views on mental health because they are quite um, reluctant and uh, very um, against uh, the, some of the medications that, are, that people are doing. And I think some of the views on that, um, and also because I'm in East Grinstead in the UK, uh, that is, has, has strong links with Scientology. Um, I don't ever see any Scientologists because they tend to, <laughs> what do they, <laughs> tend to wobble around. No, I don't really see them. But I just knew they, know they exist because there's a big, big church here. Actually, there's a few here in East Greenwood. I don't know why. Something to do with the ley lines or something odd. Um, but <laughs> um, there's a, oh yeah, there's, yeah, there's a few extreme religions. The Seventh Day Adventists and... Um, right. Mormons, but they're kind of more up in your neck of the woods. The, uh, Definitely, the yeah. yeah. Um, I do find it, yeah, uh, very, very interesting. Um, um, but, um, yeah, I, well, I have learned a lot, and now I'm actually paleo-Christian, uh, which is a unique religion that very few will have heard of and very few are part members of. But it's um, paleo as in um, going back, 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 long time, as in historically what the truth is. Um, so, um, so, for instance, Jesus Christ, uh, we're interested in, was he actually a real person or not? And it's very interesting to find out that actually there is some evidence that does it, um, exist that, um, Jesus was actually based on Julius Caesar. And it, is, it just sounds crazy if you haven't actually studied it. But um, the way that Julius Caesar was um, murdered, well, okay, he wasn't murdered, but he, well, I think he was. Was that Brutus or? There were similar, um, when, he, well, he tried to take his, uh, 
No, I haven't gone. I haven't studied it for a while. I, he was um, 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 there are similarities to how Jesus was murdered and how uh, Caesar was murdered as well. It was um, a kind of a close friend, not um, Brutus. Um, anyway, I'm just prattling on and a bit around. <laughs> I find it, I find that part of history interesting. <laughs> Yeah, this, you know, I, I don't know, I don't know, I haven't heard this one before, but, uh, you know, the uh, et tu brute yes. uh, is, uh, you know, the, the famous uh, line from the, uh, uh, from the assassination. But uh, history is just absolutely fascinating. Um, I, uh, I became an avid English history uh, reader when uh, I came across a, a book in my uh, apartment building that was my mother's English history textbook from her high school. Uh, I was something like 10 to 12 years old, somewhere in that area, and just picked it randomly off the, off the <laughs> shelf, started reading it because it was pouring outside and my friends weren't available. Uh, and I didn't like what was on TV, I guess, that day. Um, so I just started reading it, and I couldn't stop reading it. And I just kept reading it and kept reading it. The book itself uh, went only halfway up to, or, or a little past, um, Queen Victoria, because it was the book was published in 1918. Um, I still have that book. Hmm. Uh, but uh, I began reading all sorts of things about English history, and then I went into Russian history, and Chinese history, and Japanese history, Irish history, any history I could find. Uh, and um, I'm just, I'm still just fascinated by it. Anything, even historical fiction, I will read just for the history part. Um, yeah. yeah, it's just, it's just absolutely fascinating. Um, absolutely. Um... And um, I think, yeah, people don't have enough history. I know, well, and, well, they don't learn the right history. Well, it's not, I don't think, well, um, okay, current times. Um, I, I see links. I'm not the only one. I'm not on my own. Um, what's happening, how the reaction to COVID is fascist, I think, in some certain situations. What they are doing, how they're responding, is um, how Goebbels would have written about and Hitler would have done. Okay, that's... People don't often agree or... Um, there, there are very interesting books of people who were... Uh, uh, Sebastian Hafner uh, is a very good book about how he... He, he was one of the few, and there was a few, who they refrained as much as they could to join the, um, um, the fascism that was developing under Hitler. Um, and I suppose, it's, I suppose it's interesting to himself uh, at this time, uh, because I do see a similar split, really. There are those that are on the fringes and just like, saying, you know, doing, the, doing what they want to do and carry on trying to live a life normally as they want to and not get kind of sucked into this kind of really kind of um, draconian um, way of behaving that doesn't seem very human to me. I don't know. Yeah, I don't disagree with that either. It's, um, you know, the, the, those who uh, to, to paraphrase the cliche, those who don't know history are bound to repeat it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that's what we have going on right now. Um, I mean, who, who would have thought that uh, we would be alive during a pandemic? <laughs> you know, we, we read about the Spanish flu that occurred back in 1918, and we uh, have you know, sympathy for all of the people that passed away during it. Um, a lot of... Um, people I think would, would have given thought to, well, what was, the, what was the sophistication of the medical field at that point mm. uh, as compared to now? And since it's so much better now, nothing like that is ever going to happen again. Well, now we see why it's happening. And 
it, a lot of it has nothing to do with the medical sophistication because we've got all of that. Mm. We've, we've got this vaccine now that um, uh, is um, working. I, I just had my vaccine shot a few days ago. Goodness. Uh, and um, this is, you know, we're not supposed to have a global um, disease that uh, kills as many people as it has killed already. And I, I don't recall the, the most recent number, but it's uh, globally, it's just a humongous number of people that have uh, passed away. Uh, so, you know, if we teach history and if we teach civics, uh, to people who are young enough to be uh, impressioned uh, by it, and maybe that, maybe that next generation or group of generations will uh, have a more, as you put it earlier, open-minded view of um, of things, and um, will understand more that uh, we don't need to go through this again. Yeah, we'll see. Um, I think there needs to be a big power <clears throat> money shift of those who have the wealth. Uh, it's, um, well, I think, well, it's just common knowledge. There's such a huge divide between the very extreme wealthy and those who don't have that money and, you know, enough to live on. Um, I suppose, uh, yeah, I like to live positively and think it's going to change. <laughs> it's going to change. <laughs> Um, but we can do little things. Um, yeah. <laughs> I agree with you. Uh, it's, uh, it's, you know, there, there's a lot of people in a lot of different uh, financial conditions, a lot of uh, different ways that they've been brought up. And uh, there's not going to be unanimity uh, in terms of their um, world outlook uh, as a result of things like that. But uh, certainly when we are in the middle of a pandemic and uh, we all need to draw together, um, we should. And uh, we, there are, you know, the, when we went through 2020, uh, I'm sure in Britain it was just as bad as it was here. Uh, we had Donald, you had Boris. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it was, it's, it's been a difficult year and it didn't have to be. But making it you know, uh, a lot of people have needed uh, uh, positive, uplifting um, things to uh, bring them through. And uh, uh, fortunately, there are those things that are around if you can if you can find them. Yeah, true. And that was one of the questions I got from uh, Gloria, actually. Trump or Biden? <laughs> right. A question for you. The question for me is, is what? Trump, Trump or Biden? Or Biden. Oh, well, you know, look, when, when I grew up in, um, in New York, uh, part of the time that I was growing up there, I lived in Queens, not very far from oh, where, okay. the Trump, where the Trump family lived. Uh, so I've known about the Trump family since, I don't know, 15, 16, 17 years old, somewhere in that area. Wow. And um, uh, th there's no way... Uh, there is no way that uh, this fellow was um, capable of uh, uh, fulfilling the presidency. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of people didn't understand that. Uh, he's basically just a con man. And um, he showed us his true colors, unfortunately, uh, throughout all four years. So um, we have uh, somebody now. Uh, who doesn't have that baggage and is um, has been a public servant for his entire uh, adult life practically uh, and uh, has been in the Senate for 30 some odd years, 35 years, I think it is, um, before he became vice president. And now he's back. Um, he's, uh, he's probably one of the most experienced individuals that have ever stepped into the presidency. Mm. I've just seen a few clips of him on videos that come out. Um, and I think he's retarded, actually. Um, I don't think he can speak properly, but um, that could be where I've seen the, seen the, seen the, well, the news he, of him. I suppose he's yeah, less, yeah, more, more introverted or less outgoing than, say, Trump. 
Yeah, he, he grew up um, with a stutter. Uh, okay. uh, I don't know if you're aware of that or not. No, he grew know. up with a stutter. Uh, he overcame it. Uh, and certainly he's not the most exciting speaker in the world. Um, but you don't have to be exciting to be competent. Uh, and um, he, has, uh, he has demonstrated uh, more than adequately that he is uh, much more competent than Donald Trump could ever be. Hmm. Okay, and I have a question from Alison. Who is my sister? <laughs> um, and she, uh, yes, well, she actually lives far from me, not far from me actually here. Um, she asks, what advice would you give to someone wanting to write a novel? Well, uh, I would say, first of all, learn the craft. Okay. Uh, learn the craft by doing any of a number of things. You can, um, you can go to readers' conferences, excuse me, writers' conferences, uh, which I did. Uh, you can get a lot of uh, self-learning uh, on Google or any other Google-like um, uh, thing. And you can teach yourself how to write. You can start writing and write every day uh, if you can. Uh, go to um, critique groups when you've gotten some writings in and learn uh, from the people that are part of that critique group. Uh, read books about writing. Stephen King has a, a, a tremendous book called On Writing that is very, very helpful. Uh, those are all um, things that you can, uh, you can do as a start out. Those are all things that I did as my start out. I mean, I started out in 2015 with First Second Coming. Okay. And, and this book is now a, an award-winning book. Um, so it's my first book and it's award-winning. It's a complete, complete shock that that, that that happened, especially three months after publication. Um, but uh, there are plenty of things like that to do. And mm. uh, if, you're, if you're motivated enough to write a book, you will come up with um, your, uh, your your basic plot, organize it. You will uh, come up with various people who will help you out with it. Who are you know your critique group members, your the people that you meet in these uh, writers writers conferences, um, and uh, you you get to you get to learn the craft uh, and absorb it and uh, use it to the best of your capabilities. Hmm. No, that's good. Um, and yeah, it just makes me think of my own book that I haven't finished writing yet. Um, yeah. Colonel Panic. Um, I, I'm only saying it because I know one day I will actually finish it. Um, good. And that's more kind of technology, kind of loosely as well, um, because it was to do with two, three years ago, my whole business failed um, because of a kernel panic. Um, the, where my companies were, where I'd sold my um, web hosting to, whose um, learning management system Moodle platforms I was hosting, um, my backup server suffered a kernel, <clears throat> a kernel panic. Now I didn't know what that was, and I still don't, to be honest. But it's not a very good thing that happens to a server. But it just dies, and you can't recover anything. Yeah. Okay. So the, my book will just be about me, basically troubled because I had to actually tell lots of people. Sorry, all of your websites, everything, it's gone. It will never come back and it's gone, but they couldn't understand that. And I just went mad, they went mad. It was just a very difficult time. I'm sure it was, it sounds, it sounds horrible. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I know some, some authors who have who started writing in high school and um, are still writing the same story, but um, uh, one or two of them have recently published those stories. Okay. And, uh, you know, you just keep, keep at it, uh, you, you will get, you will get it done if you want to get it done. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. 
And I've got another question from Kevin. Um, um, so I'm just trying to think where Kevin posted this question. <clears throat> and I think it's because I've recently joined MeWe, um, which is a, a freer, more open um, social media platform, uh, an alternative to Facebook, um, possibly VK as well, actually. So I've gone VK, MeWe, and just swear at Facebook. And always, I always swear when his name, Kerberg, but um, well, it's just one of, the <laughs> one of the platforms that really does annoy me and lots of people with its censorship. But Kevin's question is, do you think the ongoing censorship in the liter literary world will go back to looking to start independent book selling businesses now? Uh, it may cir help circumvent the book burning by Amazon and the like. Well, um, I think the best answer I can give you is that um, here, at least in the, uh, in the US, I don't think we have um, that much going on in the way of um, those sorts of limitations. We, we do have a, uh, a vibrant, independent um, industry, if you want to think of it that way. Uh, a lot of writers are self-writing. Uh, a lot of writers are self-publishing. Uh, a lot of writers are working their own way through the system, uh, some of whom are not even using Amazon anymore, but are going through other alternative sources that are just starting to pop up. Mm. Uh, I, I don't know enough about England to know whether or not that's uh, the situation there. But uh, what we have going on with the traditional um, uh, it, publishers is a consolidation of the, the big five that I think now are the big three. Uh, and they turn, they, they, they kind of cherry pick. Okay. Uh, so uh, you can, you can spend a lot of time trying to get an agent who will then try to get one of those publishers to publish your book. And when that happens, if you actually get into that, one of those big three, your, your book will then go to the bottom of their pile in, in terms of reading, in terms of editing, in terms of marketing. So it can take several years before your book actually comes out. Okay. Whereas if you are not doing that, if you're going to self-publish, you're going to use a so-called hybrid publisher, um, you can have all of that accomplished in eight months. Okay. Uh, I used a, I used a hybrid publisher for my book. Uh, I signed with them on January 2nd of last year. The book was published on August 1st. That would never have happened in a, in a, uh, uh, a literary agency going to a publisher. Um, I would still be sitting here waiting for the publisher to do something with my book. Yeah. No, that's great. <clears throat> and I had a question from Georgia. Um, how in the world did you come up with the, this concept? I suppose, yeah. Um, yeah, I suppose, yeah. How did you come up yeah. with your concept? I think we kind of, did, you kind of mentioned that. Yeah, I did. Uh, um, but, but for her, but for Georgia, her name is? Yeah. Okay, Georgia. So basically it came, so it comes out of a random thought that I had while at 9-11, on 9-11 while the building, while the World Trade Center was fallen. And because I had connections with that building, I think that had something to do with that thought coming to me, but it stayed with me until I started to write in 2015. And at that point I had the full um, history of my two main characters. I had a basic plot. I had three um, possible endings um, and for the sake of in case you're interested, this, the ending that's in the book is the second of the three. Um, and I, it just spilled out. 
mm. in one sitting as uh, I was writing and typing as furiously as I could to keep up with my thoughts. And it, that was the start of, of it, but it all came out of the basic idea of our earth needs a new God, a planetary turnaround specialist, because we have global problems and everything in the book um, revolves around that basic idea. Hmm. Yeah, Although good. it turned out, it turned out to be a, it turned out to be a, a, a romance between the two main characters that I didn't foresee when I started to write the book. <laughs> yeah, and she asked, yeah, about your characters actually. If you yeah. could spend what the if you could spend the day with one character from um, first second coming, who would it be? Why would you choose him or her? Where what where would you go and what would you do? Okay. Um, my, uh, my, my female main character is uh, a Latina. Her name is Brenda Lee Santa Maria. And um, she's a kick. Um, <laughs> she, she started talking to me uh, when I was about halfway through my first draft. Um, and um, very extroverted. And um, uh, I would wake up at four o'clock in the morning um, hearing her in my head telling me that it's time to get up and get to the next chapter. Uh, and then she would narrate what the next chapter was and I would basically be just sitting here typing. So I was basically transcribing what she was describing was going on in her book. Wow. Uh, and, you know, the first time it happened, it freaked me out because yeah. I'm not used <laughs> to having, so I'm not used to know. having <laughs> a, yeah, a, a, a Latin female in my head. <laughs> that obviously you can see me that's not me i'm not latin i'm not female uh but um as this kept going on she kept talking to me and i would talk back to her and we would have this conversation that just went through you know our my head uh and uh, she's still doing it now i'm doing the sequel to the book um now and i still hear from her when i'm doing that um so in terms of spending a day with one of the characters i'm already i've already been doing that <laughs> uh but in terms of actually physically doing that i would probably go to a um, a, con uh, a concert with her um there's a uh, a very well-known uh latina uh musician here um uh, her, her name is um uh, why am I blanking on it now? Um, Gabby Marino. And uh, she's phenomenal. I mean, it, it, she, she just, she's just extraordinary. But I didn't know about her until Brenda Lee told me about her. And so I would go with, I would go with Brenda Lee to, to that concert if it's available. Um, one of the things I would do uh, with her if, if there was a real Brenda Lee in actual <laughs> physical Brenda Lee um, uh, to uh, spend time with. Wow. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> I'm just going to pick another question from Gloria. It sure. Was, um, um, uh, she, she, she asked a lot, actually. I went, um, but, um, uh, um, Sorry, there was one I saw in those. Um, what did you want to become when you were growing up as a kid? Did you always want to, to be in the legal field or did it just happen by chance? Um, I wanted to play baseball. <laughs> wow. uh, uh, I, was a very good, I was a very good athlete. I was a very good baseball player. Uh, I, I actually was... Um, drafted to play baseball, but I didn't oh, wow. follow up on that. Um, so that's what I kind of wanted to, to do and to be. I was a big fan of the New York Mets growing up in New York City. I grew up in the Bronx and was not a Yankee fan at all. Um, and uh, that, was, that was it. But as far as legal is concerned, uh, I was telling you earlier about the English history book mm. that I read that had a big, that had a big influence on me, and um, I started reading uh, the newspaper. Uh, I was probably the only 12-year-old who would read, read the New York Post front to back or back to front. 
Uh, they had the sports in the back, so usually I wrote a deck of them. <laughs> um, and, uh, and then Water, Watergate happened in my college years. And I was absolutely fascinated by what was going on there. And, you know, you could watch it on television. You could read it uh, in the newspapers. You could, um, uh, total saturation in terms of what was going on with Watergate. Mm. Uh, and it just, it, it, that was what really um, gave me the idea of going into, going to law school and uh, becoming a trial lawyer, uh, which is what I did. Uh, if, if there hadn't been a Watergate, I don't know that I would, would have become a lawyer. Yeah, fascinating. Fascinating how those things play out, really. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm just you know, thinking about that. Really. The influences that you know, kind of shape your decisions, really, and change the way your plans is where you're going and based on, uh, who knows? <laughs> Total fortuity, really. I mean, mm. uh, you know, I, I don't. I picked that book out of the out of a long hallway full of books and started reading it. Um, you know, the newspapers came along. Vietnamese pro, Viet, the protests of the Vietnam War and civil rights um, in the nineteen sixties um, brought me into that, uh, and then Watergate happened, and so just. You know, I was just responding to all of these events. I was participating in the protests. I was um, very, um, very into current events. And um, uh, I recognize current events as, uh, as his historic in the making, mm -hmm. but also in, in determining what history would be in the future. And um, becoming a trial lawyer was something I did because uh, I wanted to, um, uh, I wanted to help people uh, uh, who were in need of lawyers and good trial lawyers to, um, uh, in that way. Uh, mm. I had originally thought I might go into politics, but it was too, too uh, kind of slimy for me, if you don't mind my putting it that way. Well, you're quite right. There's quite a lot. Of <laughs> Slight, slimy is quite a polite term for what I'm thinking about a lot of them. Uh, I will hold back on what I think of Boris. Um, I yeah, I won't say it. Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, you're you're recording this, so don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, good idea. So anyway, back to yourself. <laughs> and um, um, so w where where can our listeners get hold of a copy of your book? And do you have another one coming soon? Um, uh, I'll answer that in, in reverse order. The, uh, the sequel is in the works, but I don't expect it to be ready um, this year. It probably will be uh, sometime in early, maybe the first half of 2022. Okay. Uh, and um, the, uh, the books are available. The first Second Coming is available on Amazon. Okay. Uh, on Amazon UK it has it. Um, Amazon, uh, regular Amazon America and Canada has it. Uh, Kobo has uh, ebooks. Uh, there are um, a number of others that do as well. I don't know how many of them are actually in England, uh, but um, if you are not in England and you are listening to me, you're in America or, or uh, what, Canada. Uh, you can get the books at Barnes and Noble. Okay. Uh, also, and uh, but can but Amazon would be your best bet. Um, you know, just for people who are um, uh, interested in picking up either the ebook or the paperback or the hardcover. Um, well, that's fantastic. And um, do you have a website about? Uh, I do. I, I, yeah, I do have a website, and it's very imaginatively named. It's jeffpollock.com. Um, Pollock is spelled P-O-L-L-A-K. So if you put a C in there, you're not going to get to my, <laughs> my website. Uh, but it, it Jeff is J-E-F-F. -F. I know there's an English Jeff that starts with a G, but mine is J-E-F-F-P-O-L-L-A-K.com. No, that's great. And I would like to get, have a copy myself. 
and I would like to give you something for a copy, which is just behind me. I'd like to show you, and I'd like to send it to you. Sure. Just give me a second. Okay. Oh dear. Need to, uh... <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. Um, we'll see. It's an Everyman Radio mug. I got, I got two of these. Um, I ordered uh, two. So I've got a, a new one and uh, one that I use as well. Um, and yeah, if you wanted to, if you're interested, I'd like to send you one of those and receive a copy of your book. What do you think? I think we can manage that. <laughs> um, do you want do you want my book to be uh, sent to you by ebook or do you want paperback? A uh, paperback, please. Paperback. Okay, um, I can get that to you. We should. Um, uh, uh, off the record, I think probably um, yeah. uh, work out uh, the arrangements. No, that sounds good. Um, okay. Yeah, <laughs> I'm so funny. I, oh, doesn't matter. I was going to get all this prepared, so I was going to show you my lovely mug. But <laughs> doesn't okay. matter. All I can find. Um, yes, it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm sure it's lovely. <laughs> I'll be more than would be more than happy to accept it. Thank you very much for. And I really look forward to yeah to yeah reading your book. Um, that sounds fantastic, and um, yeah, I have been so pleased talking with you. Um, Same here. Yeah, uh, fascinating. Uh, it's been yeah quite a few months, and I've since I've yeah done this. As, as you can tell, my 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 website isn't quite functioning again. I don't know what happened to it. <laughs> it fell asleep. <laughs> hey, yeah, I, I, I emailed you about that. Yeah, uh, it, it looks like it looks like you got hit by a hacker or some some uh, uh, malicious virus other than a pandemic one. Oh, yeah, no. Um, well, that's from the same family. Um, that's it. <laughs> because I'm using a Windows computer. But um, um, well, um, I actually know the reason, um, and it's actually one of the plugins I use for the podcast uh, list, and uh, they haven't they haven't updated it to the latest version, and there was a reason why it needed to be updated, and so I need to contact them to get the latest version that will actually be then adjusted slightly to um, make it function. Anyway, I've <laughs> okay, I do. It's <laughs> it, it's a lot. Of, it's a lot of work, is what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Well, okay. I'll fix it. I'll fix it. And um, yeah. Uh, anyway, absolutely fantastic talking with you. And I do wish you all the best of luck. And yeah, look forward to seeing the book, reading it. And yeah, look you. Yeah, look you all the best with your your, your publishing career. It's um, a wonderful change, I would imagine, uh, from what you have been doing to actually be doing that. And um, are you doing public speaking and things like that, or do you? Oh yeah, I've done plenty of plenty of public oh, wow. speaking. I mean, you know, whenever you're talking to a jury, you're do, you're doing public speaking. Um, but I've also done public speaking outside the court, uh, so I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty familiar with that. Uh, but thank you very much for all the compliments. I really appreciate that. I, I have enjoyed uh, this conversation with you as well. Um, and um, I, I wish you all the best of luck with uh, working out that that um, uh, that little problem, and um, with your with your show. Oh uh, yeah, thanks. Now that's a small thing. The next thing is where I take over the BBC <laughs> <laughs> and start well, sending out misinformation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, it's interesting. 
I go through periods, periods where I want to be, it's almost megalom megalomaniacal, where I want to take over the world and, uh, but no, yeah, I have to be realistic really what I can do. So at the moment is, I want to get my website working. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have Earth's new God coming up in 2027. So, um, yeah. you know, you've got to get to it quickly because he's going to be around. <laughs> Yeah, fantastic. No, that's great. Been lovely talking with you. And yeah, Same here. All, all the best of luck. Yeah. Thank you. Same to you. Yeah, cheers. Thanks. Bye. Talk to you soon. Bye bye. Yeah, bye. And now it's time for some hilarious comedy on Every Man Radio. Techno Gadget Board Show. So it's been interesting times in the interesting times land, and I had a problem. What was it? I had a problem with this. This is a smoke alarm, and it was just making lots of beeping noises very late at night. And um, so I didn't know how to turn off the beeping noises, so I used uh, this toy. <laughs> and that's why I'm holding it in my hand, because it fell off the wall. <laughs> um, but it turns out I didn't need to do that, because the problem with it was this. Uh, the battery had run out, but I didn't know, and it was just beeping, so I smashed it. <laughs> but anyway, that's just one of the problems, problems of living in smoky land. So, in today's show, um, ah, to add a bit of comedy into the podcast Every Man Radio and, and Techno Gadget Board Show, I have. Um, ah, yes, come up with a new idea. A bit like Have I Got News for You, but Have I Got Lies for You? Since a lot often what they broadcast is kind of just, um, what is it? BBC News. It's just kind of the news but it's not really news. It's not really the truth. <laughs> What's really going on behind the scenes? So, I've recorded, ah, I've launched, launching a brand new show, comedy show, like Have I Got News For You, but Have I Got Lies For You, that's what I called it, and will be hosted by me, Mr. Techno Gadget Boy Show. Um, what do you think, Mango? Yeah, Mango knows. So, let's have a look at, uh, ah yeah, the jingle. So I've got a new jingle. And how we went about it. Enjoy.
All right, here we are. It's another free Jingle Friday. My name is Mike Russell. And my name is Isabella Russell. And we're live here from our studios bringing you free jingles. Yes, all the free jingles you can imagine, right, Isabella? Absolutely. Well, <laughs> all the jingles you can Stay imagine. Stay here. For listening to the Techno Gadget Ball Show, yada yada yada, something like that. <laughs> Enjoy. New music. Looking out the window, fogging up the glass. I trace the skyline with my finger I'm wondering where you're at I'm wondering where you're at You keep it hidden, keep it underneath your skin Don't even leave a trail so you forget where you are I'm wondering if you need 